feet and represent my fellow passengers. I'll make a deal with any airline I fly on. You get me there safely, and I won't represent any passenger. As we've seen, structural failure on airplanes can be caused by inadequate inspection, faulty maintenance practices, or design flaws buried deep within the guts of these giant machines. But the deadliest single plane crash in history, a 747 that crashed into a Japanese mountainside, had another cause entirely. Twelfth of August, 1985, Japan Airlines Flight 123 has a staggering 524 people on board. The plane is set to fly from Tokyo to Osaka. This workhorse of a jet makes the one-hour trip several times a day. Suzanne Bailey's boyfriend, Akihisa Yukawa, is on board. Aki was a banker. He was travelling on business that day. It was a very humid, hot Japanese summer day. From the moment that I opened my eyes that day, and, and Aki did too, um, there was a hint of, of something wrong, which I couldn't explain. Also on board, Takashi Takeda's sister, Sumiko. She did tell me that she's going to Tokyo, but I said to her, it's dangerous to fly. She told me, don't worry, brother, I've already bought a ticket. This is footage of the actual plane involved in this crash, taking off on its final ill-fated flight. 6.12 p.m., everything seems normal as JAL-123 lifts off and climbs out. But suddenly, 12 minutes into the flight, there's a problem. They were in the middle 20,000 feet, which is where airplanes experience the most pressure on the vessel itself. At that point, they received a door warning that a door was ajar, which turned out not to be the case. An aeroplane's fuselage expands as the plane goes up and contracts as the plane comes down. The altitude with the greatest pressure differential between the pressurized inside of an aircraft and the unpressurized atmosphere outside is around 24,000 feet. That's where JAL-123 experiences an explosive shock. a massive decompression for reasons that they didn't know. But the crew did not realize the amount of damage they had sustained until very quickly the airplane became less and less controllable to the point that it was no longer controllable at all. That would be a nightmare scenario for a pilot. What the pilots don't know is that a critical piece of the 747 structure has cracks that have expanded to breaking point and snapped. It's the aft pressure bulkhead, an umbrella-shaped structure toward the back of the plane. It is the device that keeps the pressure in the back part of the airplane contained properly. Without that aft pressure bulkhead, you can't pressurize the tube, and you wouldn't be able to breathe at 35,000 feet without the use of pressurized supplemental oxygen. The back of the airplane is getting considerable amount of stress, not only from the pressurization, but also from the tail, and all the stresses of flight. So that bulkhead is very, very robust. It is a serious piece of structure. At the moment of the decompression, all the pressurized air from the cabin needs somewhere to go. It blasts back through the cracked bulkhead, and unbeknownst to the pilots, the tremendous force blows the vertical fin and other parts of the tail section right off the giant 747. Critical hydraulic lines are severed in the process. The first officer makes several radio calls that says that we're in uncontrollable flight. We do not have control of the airplane. They're fighting literally for their lives. The airplane starts to go into what they call a fugoid or pitch oscillations up and down, as well as Dutch roll. The airplane starts to swing back and forth. And no matter what the pilot tries to do as far as flight control inputs, He's not having an effect. The pilots fight desperately for control of the aeroplane for 32 terrifying minutes. They manage to keep the plane aloft, but with no hydraulics, they can't control the plane's up and down or side to side movement. Eyewitnesses on the ground later report the plane was flying 
like a staggering drunk. As JAL-123 enters a mountainous region northwest of Tokyo, the plane goes into a nosedive, falling 18,000 feet a minute. Just before 7 p.m., JAL Flight 123 drops off the radar screen. It has slammed into a mountain at nearly 400 miles an hour. These are the first daylight pictures from the site of what appears to be the worst single airliner crash ever. The Japan Airlines 747 went down in the mountains outside Tokyo. It is believed that all 524 people on board were killed. Coming up, investigators face the grim task of piecing together the mystery. We had a catastrophic scene. We had millions of airplane parts scattered over a mountainside. But among the wreckage, a miraculous discovery. Japan Airlines Flight 123. It is a tragedy with many clues tonight, but no hard answers yet. It takes rescuers half a day to get to the remote spot where Japan Airlines JAL Flight 123 has slammed into a mountain northwest of Tokyo. When investigators finally reach the crash site, they begin combing the wreckage for clues. Miraculously, they find something they didn't expect. Two women and two young girls have survived. The four people that survived the accident were seated in the very aft section of the airplane. So when the airplane struck the ground, the tail section broke from the main section of the fuselage and was thrown well away from the impact point. Takashi Takeda hoped his sister would be among the survivors. Sadly, as he discovered at a makeshift morgue, that was not the case. She only had a scar here on the chin. There was no damage to the rest of the body. I recognized her right away. Testimony from those who did survive will later prove valuable. But in the meantime, there are countless other clues to pursue. And we had millions of airplane parts scattered over a mountainside. But the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder, as well as witness statements, all of these different sources of information help investigators put the puzzle together. Within days, two important clues turn up. A photograph taken by an amateur photographer as the plane passed over his village reveals the plane flying with part of its tail section missing. And part of that missing tail section, including the vertical fin, which keeps the plane stable, is fished out of a bay 100 miles away from the mountain. It was quite a distance from the crash site, so they knew it had departed the airplane early. So now you begin to ask the question, what could cause a decompression, control problems, and the loss of a vertical fin? Looking at the plane's maintenance history, investigators learned there was previous damage to the aft pressure bulkhead, the structure at the back of the cabin that keeps the cabin pressurized. It was cracked seven years before the crash, when the plane's tail accidentally dragged along the runway in an incident known as a tail strike. A tail strike can occur in one of two phases of flight, either on takeoff, where the airplane is on the runway and is beginning its initial climb, or it can occur on landing, where the airplane is in a tail low, nose high attitude. Either way, it's going to create some sort of damage. The repair of the cracked bulkhead is problematic. The structure is so large, more than 15 feet across. The airplane was originally built around it. To make the repair, Boeing removes the skin of the airplane around the bulkhead, replaces the bulkhead's damaged lower half, and then reinstalls the skin of the plane over it. To fuse the two bulkhead halves, Boeing's repair calls for a single splice plate or doubler. But with the skin of the plane back on, the doubler that's applied is too narrow, and an additional piece of filler is used to make up the difference. That's problem number one. Problem number two, the correct procedure calls for two rows of rivets to hold that doubler in place. Only one row is used. For seven years, the single row and the split up panel have been carrying twice the load they should have been. They decided to alter the ins installation procedure. It wasn't an approved procedure. The repair is certified to last 10,000 takeoff landing cycles. By the day of the crash, 
JAL-123 has already gone more than 12,000 cycles. The repair is inspected, but because a sealant has been used over the gap in the bulkhead, cracks developing between the rivets are not found. Unfortunately, the repair was insufficient and cracks started to develop over the service life after the airplane was returned into passenger use. There was no proper inspection procedure as well. As JAL-123 passes through 24,000 feet, cracks begin to connect between the rivets, leading the bulkhead to fail catastrophically. It's a structural failure due not to bad aeroplane design, but to a faulty repair. When we look back at structural failures, how common is it that it's repair related or maintenance related? As a maintainer, it pains me to say this, but I think we're finding more and more where it's, it's repair related. There were at least two suicides in the wake of this incident. A Japan Airlines employee who was working with victims' families and an inspection engineer who issued a certificate of airworthiness for the doomed plane after the 1978 tail strike. To this day, JAL-123 remains the deadliest single aircraft accident in the history of aviation. We've seen the disastrous results of airplanes that are not properly repaired, maintained or inspected. Japan Airlines Flight 123, American Flight 191 and Aloha Flight 243. We've also seen what can happen when a plane has a design flaw as in the case of United Flight 811. But those flights are the exception, not the rule. Every day, millions of passengers land safely. I'm asked often what's the most dangerous part about flying, and quite literally, it's the drive to the airport. But for those who survived airplane accidents, or those whose relatives didn't, statistics are of little comfort. They've seen and felt the consequences of structural failure firsthand. We have manufacturers that make incredible machines, cars, elevators, airplanes, trains. And when you get on these elevators and these trains and these airplanes, you expect them to work. But once that faith in machines is shaken, you have this cynical thought. You know, the question authority bumper sticker? Well, I suggest one, qu question technology. And put it on your suitcase. Survivors remember the Manchester United plane crash in Munich air disaster, I was there. Brand new next Monday at 9. Stay tuned for Crash of the Century.